week's challenge, you theists have the fine-tuning stuff all wrong. I mean, your God is incompetent if it takes this volume of universe to create this insignificant volume of life, right? So the objection this week really has to do with kind of the vastness, the size of the universe, and this somehow counts against the fine-tuning of the universe. All right, uh, let me do a quick summary of the fine-tuning argument, and then I'll get into five quick responses. So the fine-tuning argument, what it does is it looks at the kind of initial conditions of the universe. It looks at the fundamental constants and qualities of the universe and says these things are finely tuned. They, there's this uh, kind of very, 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 very small range of kind of life-permitting uh, conditions. And then the question is, all right, this, this fine-tuning, what's it best explained by? And, of course, the fine-tuning argument infers that the best explanation for the fine-tuning of the universe is a fine-tuner or a designer, okay? So that's just kind of the basics of the argument. Okay, so first response. Number one, fine-tuning is, uh, it's not controversial. Whether you're a theist or not a theist, uh, physicists, cosmologists will, 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 will tell you the universe does seem to be finely tuned. The controversy isn't whether or not it's finely tuned. The controversy is on what best explains that. Okay, so to say that the universe is not finely tuned for life is, uh, is to go against the scientific consensus on this. Okay, secondly, the vastness and size of the universe is actually evidence of the fine tuning. So you have things like the size of the universe, the mass of the universe, the dark energy in the universe. These things are are evidence of the fine-tuning of the universe. If you, if you didn't have the kind of vastness, the mass, you didn't have these kind of constants, uh, at, at the beginning you, you would get a universe that either expanded too fast or too slowly, and in either case you wouldn't have a life-permitting universe. Uh, and so the vastness of the universe actually points to its, its fine-tuning. That's evidence of the fine-tuning. Okay, number three, my question would be what follows? What follows from this objection? Let's say the, the creator could have monkeyed with physics, could have monkeyed with the cosmological constants, could have made a universe where it was just kind of our, our sun and our planet, and uh, somehow that permitted life. So he could, have, he could have done it that way, but he didn't. What follows from that? Does it follow that he doesn't exist? Of course not. Let me give you an illustration. Uh, let's say I look at a painting on this huge, vast canvas. I look at that painting and I think to myself, well, gosh, why couldn't the painter have used a much smaller canvas? He could have fit that same picture on a much smaller canvas. Does it follow that the painter doesn't exist? <laughs> no, of course not. And this leads me to uh, my fourth response, and that would be uh, the fact that this objection isn't really a scientific objection. It's really getting into theological reflection, right? With science, we're looking at data and we're drawing we're drawing inferences and we have to use the resources of philosophy uh, and, and clear thinking and, and also theology when we're talking about well, the, the nature and purposes of the designer. And so here's, here's my question for the objector. Well, what was God's purpose? Let's say God did design the universe. What was his purpose in designing it? I'm guessing they're going to say, well, I, I don't know. Right? I'm not God. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Uh, in order to, to draw this inference, uh, you're going to have to know something about the nature of God, his character, and his purposes, right? And, and there's a lot of times when, I mean, just think about it, a lot of times when you're not sure why someone has done something and you need more information. And so you ask them, like, well, well why did you do it this way? Like if, if a painter painted on a vast canvas and you went to him and said, why did you use such a large canvas? Well, you have to wait for him to ex give you his explanation. And then oftentimes you'd go, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. There was knowledge I didn't have, now I have it, and that makes sense of why the Creator has done this. But notice, we're, we're now getting into theological reflection. And so knowing if there is a Creator who's created this, and then looking at the vastness of the universe and saying those things don't, don't go together, well, you would have to know maybe his purpose in creating. And so, uh, so, but again, we're moving into theology. We're not, we're, we've moved away from the scientific data and we're now in, into theology. And so this is where the theist says, well, hey, I have an upper hand. I actually have information from this being. He's given me information. He's told us uh, some of his purposes in creating. 
And, and that now helps inform how I look at something like the vastness of the universe. And number five, I would say the vastness of the universe can be interpreted not as, oh, this guy doesn't have his act together, he wastes all this space, right? That's one inference that could be drawn. There have to, there have to be an argument that was made for that. But I would say, well, there's another inference that could be drawn that could actually be more well supported, and that would be the inference that this creator thinks that we're special. This fine tuner uses this vast universe, uses this vast amount of resources on us because we're actually special. We, we are made in his image. And he lavishes his resources on us. And of course, given the nature of this creator, given the nature of the fine tuner, given the nature of God, resources aren't our problem for him. Right? Sometimes we think of God simply as a kind of engineer when it comes to science and design arguments and that kind of thing. But I think we also need to think of God as artist and think of, of the fact that God lavishes on us and he lavishes his resources on the universe. And he, he's like a painter who, who says, well, oh, I, I just have this limited amount of paint and this small little canvas. No, I mean, this painter, this artist has unlimited resources. He can create a huge universe, a small universe. He can use whatever resources he wants. And, and I think, given the vastness of the universe, we can conclude, wow, he has spent a ton of resources on us. So you got a universe that is life permitting. And uh, I think that communicates how special he thinks we are. And of course, this is what he says in his word. And so there, I think, are five quick responses to this objection and we've answered another objection.